Okay, so let's carry on. So um, at Google I.O., uh, Google introduced this new, new layout, and the question is, why do we need yet another layout? We have linear layout, relative layout, and we could achieve everything with that. And the reason uh, the Googlers gave at uh, I.O. last year was that they want to flatten the hierarchy. So that would make it easier for us developers to de design our screens, and at runtime, the designs would render faster. So especially in the recycler views, uh, that's important, or when the activity starts up for the first time, it's important that it starts up fastly. Um, but the constraint layout basically is just a normal view group. It's similar to the layout, uh, relative layout in that you um, relate one view to another or relate a new view added to the container to the borders of the container. Um, it works more or less like Apple's uh, auto layout. I will come back to that a bit later on. And it's available as a separate library. You just add a one, one line into your Gradle file uh, and uh, you can use the library. And if you really need to go back that way, that far, you can go back to version 9, that's gingerbread. I hope you don't need to go that far. So, um, for the layout editor to work, you need at least Android Studio 2.2. I highly recommend to use the latest preview of uh, 2.4, uh, which is out, which has uh, some new bugs, but also some new uh, additions that make working with the layout easier. Um, you also need an up-to-date Android support repository, and uh, then add this line to the build.gradle. We are at 1.0.2 right now with a constraint layout. They had about eight alpha versions, five beta versions, so they were really eagerly working on the layout and improving it constantly, and we're taking into consideration what the community said or wished for. But what are constraints? Well, constraints are anything that decides where on the screen your view appears, the size of the view, and if the view appears at all, if it's visible or not. And you can uh, define all these things within the layout. Um, the layout editor has two different views to present your screen. That's the blueprint view that you can use to design the screen, and a preview that shows a more or less correct preview of uh, your screen. Um, you can co create the constraints in there and define lots of properties on your views, but the XML is still usable. So if you prefer to use uh, XML, for some times it's uh, faster to do so, uh, you can still use XML, and it's very important if you're doing pull requests or code reviews, um, you just don't have to uh, open the layout editor to see where. Uh, the changes, you can just read the XML, it's really readable and uh, easily understandable, and uh, then decide on that whether it's uh, okay or not. Um, if you constrain uh, views next to each other and say, for example, the second view should appear right of the first view and there should be 20 dips uh, in between, uh, what you're creating is a linear uh, equation and to help you solve the linear equation, because you have lots of views and lots of constraints and lots of equations, uh, there's this Cassowary algorithm that helps you solve that, if you want to do it on your own. And this algorithm is used by Google uh, for the constraint layout. It's used by Apple for uh, auto layout. And there's even a web variant of, uh, available for it. It's constraint CSS, which is also very interesting. So before I start with a live demo uh, of the editor, um, <clears throat> let me show you the important things scaled up because uh, when I'm doing this in the layout editor on this tiny screen, you will see very shortly, <laughs> um, you might not notice everything. So you have this round circles at the edges of the view. Um, at the bottom and at the right edge, you have empty circles, so there is no constraint for the right edge, there's no constraint for the bottom edge, but there are constraints for the top and the left edge, and in this case, the view is eight dips from the top of the parent and eight dips from the left of the parent. 
and you have those square handles at the edges, uh, at the corners of the view. You can use them to resize the view um, if you really want to do it uh, visually. Uh, and you have those tiny um, icons on the bottom. The left icon is uh, to remove all the constraints that you have created for this view. And the next one is only available for text views. Um, if you click this, there is another han uh, handle appearing within the button, in this case, uh, so that you can uh, align the baselines of multiple text views uh, so that the text appears on the same line. So with that, let's start in our studio. And as you noticed, we do not have much place here. So, <clears throat> so first, this is the blueprint view. That's the preview. And you can even uh, do both next to each other if you like. So um, I'm working in the demo mostly with buttons because they have this nice feature that you see everything here, at least. Oh, I didn't drag it properly, I guess. They should have this nice feature. That's a demo for you. What is happening here? So let's remove this layout. Sorry. Let's create a new layout. Not sure what's happening there. It's demo time. What's that? Demo is working great. So let's try again, dragging a button in here. You see those uh, helper lines um, you can use to center, for example, the view. Now the button appears. <laughs> and <laughs> um, <coughs> this button uh, now is centered in the preview. But actually, if you would run this view right away, and you can see this here in this uh, new helper dialog, uh, this view would jump to the top left corner of the screen because it has no constraints. You direct it into the center, but it has no constraints and it would jump uh, up here. Um, I personally don't like this. Uh, I like that it jumps, but I don't like that the preview doesn't uh, show you that it jumps. So uh, you cannot really rely on the preview. You should always look, is there any error in here? As soon as there is an error, you're not good to go. If there are only war warnings, uh, shown, you're good to go. So to constrain this, uh, you could either infer the constraints and did this work? Yes, it did work. So now uh, Android Studio just guessed what I wanted to do with the view and it's constrained it properly in, in this case in the center of the screen. Um, now what you see here are those squiggly lines. Um, that are saying uh, the view is aligned to the left side of the screen and to the right side of the screen and to the top and the bottom. And those <coughs> squiggly lines resemble springs that pull your view into place. And um, you could change the strength of the springs. Say this left spring is stronger than the right spring and you could go here and the view would move around. What you have here is uh, the bias. So uh, this, in this case, the view is at 30% of the screen. Uh, with page up and page down, you can go by 10. And with left and right, you can go uh, by 1. If you want, uh, because dragging it around, especially on the screen that tiny, is a bit uh, more difficult. Now what is, if you want to have this view <coughs> take up all the width of the container. So in this case, we use match constraint. Notice that it's match constraint and not match parent. Let's do something before we use this one. Let's take another one and constrain this to that. This view, so the right edge of the newly added button to the left edge of the button we already had. And um, the left edge of the button to the left edge of the screen. I think this yeah, worked. And now we do this here, just over here. And now we see that it's uh, in the center of the remaining space, this view. 
It's not in the center of the screen, it's in the center of the remaining space. And if we now do match constraint, oh, it was the wrong view, sorry. Here. It's taking up all the space between its constraints. So match parent isn't available uh, for constraint layout. Um, if you want to, uh, a view to take up the size of the parent, you have to uh, constrain it to the parent directly. If you constrain it to other views, um, well, you can use the, uh, make the view as wide as the remaining space, as the space that uh, is defined by your constraints. So, let's remove both. <coughs> Turn this around. Now I'm showing you uh, chains, which are a very helpful feature in uh, um, with constraint layout. Uh, chains allow you to uh, combine multiple views within one uh, orientation. So you can chain views either horizontally or vertically. So let's select everything. And first of all, we align the top edges of the views. Now what you see um, is that, um, so the left button, the leftmost button is constrained to the top of the middle button, which is constrained to the top of the right button. But the buttons itself aren't constrained to anything uh, vertically yet. So I'm doing this for now. And they move, if you uh, move the right button around, those other tools move with it, of course. And let's put it, oh, they're already chained, no. And now we do uh, center horizontally, select everything again. No, that was not correct. Ah, now it's doing that. I'm sorry, I have to undo that for a while. So now it's working properly. So what I did now with center horizontally is to create actually a chain between those uh, elements. And um, now you, uh, the remaining space that is not taken up by the views is equally distributed among those, or is equally used for spacing the views. And there are different chain styles. So this one is uh, um, the chain spread. And you see there is a new icon at the bottom of the views. And you can cycle around. Wait a moment. So this is um, the spread. What's the name? I forgot. I have to look up here. Spread inside. Uh, what is spread inside? So the uh, Outmost views go to the edge of the uh, screen and the remaining space is then divided equally among the views that remain. And there's another um, thing that is packed. Um, if you want to, um, the chain to be as close together, those views within the chain, you can use the packed style. And you can even um, use multiple chains so you could um, use another button, for example, here. Wait. Then select those two. And use proper mouse. And then those are changed again. So we had this. Um, this connection to the other button before, this one is removed by that. And now I have a chain where those two buttons on the left are chained vertically and all three buttons, uh, or three buttons that I had originally are changed uh, horizontally. So what you can do with that, um, let me just show you, is, uh, no, that's not the right one. Ah, yeah. That's a bit awkward with this. So this is uh, more or less resembling a typical list view. Say you have an image view on the left, 
just imagine that this is an uh, image view. You have a header and you have a description beneath that and you have something on the right like a text, uh, for example, you uh, did a run of 10 kilometers. Um, and you would then do a chain of three elements. Let me zoom in here. What I did was uh, I changed the bottom, the text view, and the, the other button on the other side um, horizontally. And then I changed those two text views vertically. And then I said for the text views that they should use a match constraint width so that they take up every space. And we go back here. So the, uh, and you can see <coughs> that this works nicely no matter which screen. So that's uh, why chains are really useful and why you might need, so this uh, horizontal chain is a spread chain and this vertical chain is a packed chain, why you might combine uh, different types of chains. Um, I have another thing. No, didn't open. So if you want to, go, uh, <coughs> I guess it's something that you really need, uh, but say you want to have four images uh, grouped at the center of the screen and uh, have something else on the top of that, um, you would also use multiple chains for that. So I've changed the um, buttons e each horizontally, it's a packed chain, and then uh, I aligned them to each other and used a vertical chain again to put both groups into place or both chains into place. Uh, you must of course be careful here because um, you have to do the second chain on the leading element. So the leading element of a chain is always determining how a chain appears on the screen. It's not, so if I would have done this with those two on the right side, it wouldn't have worked because um, the chain starts with this button, the horizontal chain. That's something you have to take into consideration. Let me have a look at my analog cheat sheet. Ah, yeah, there's something important. No, let's have this one. So here, if, uh, also again, a chain at the bottom and uh, it's changed, or it's, uh, the space is limited by this button, so it's, uh, the left edge is not to the parent, of the, uh, so to the container itself, but to this button. And now what happens if I say that this button should not be visible anymore? And that is very important, and that is something that auto layout doesn't uh, do right away. So if you say this view is no longer visible, um, all your constraints are still upheld, the view is still there. Um, we might zoom in a bit. It's there. <laughs> it's just um, a zero dip view. It doesn't take up any space and all the margins are also set to zero dips. And um, so now that this view is gone, the constraint to the left of the view is still constrained to this view and this view is constrained to the parent container so uh, transitively, now, this button is directly connected to the parent container. This is what's happening with view.gone. So uh, you can use it as you are used to using it, and this is very helpful. And, and uh, now it's a bit different for chains, of course, because if you would uh, just uphold the constraints, um, <coughs> The remaining space wouldn't be distributed correctly, but if uh, you set a view to view.gone in a chain, um, the remaining space is equally distributed between those views that remain visible. So Google takes care of that. So, uh, one thing about this uh, error dialog here, I think that's really annoying because in this view, I only have warnings 
and it's still showing red. This is something that is really not good um, because um, red should be really only useful for errors and uh, we should they should use yellow or something other uh, for when there's only a warning because uh, you tend to overlook this um, because it's red all the time. And um, um, if it were uh, yellow uh, all the time, okay, and when it turns red, you knew that you have left out a constraint and that one of your views would jump to the top left. So it's, um, I like what I did there, but I don't like the color they used there. So another look at my cheat sheet. Um, What we have here <coughs> is we have a helper thingy. It's a guideline. Um, this is something that is also a proper view, but if you look in the source uh, of this view, it's uh, just the layout method is returning directly and the uh, uh, draw method is returning directly and it's <coughs> not drawing anything on the screen, but it's there to help you also create constraints to it. So in this case, um, it's a view uh, or a line that I uh, drew at 25% of the screen to limit the um, remaining space for this group of buttons, which you should imagine as a group of images. <laughs> so uh, those guide guidelines are helpful if you want to uh, do something, especially they have different modes. Let's get here. So now it's a percentage. And what you see now is uh, that it changed to an error to the top. So it now has a, um, 128 dips from the top. It's, it's now. So you can either use a, a dip value for that, or you can use the uh, same for dips to the bottom, or you can use a percentage value. I personally think percentage is the most useful because with dip values you can uh, work in other ways, uh, but that's something uh, useful to know, especially if you want to use um, uh, percentage values in your screens. So this is another uh, screen uh, that I prepared. <coughs> what is important here, the, let me zoom in there. The fab uh, here on the right side of the image view is um, centered to the edge of the image view. And if you want to achieve that, you have to, in this case, align the top of the view, the top edge of the view to the bottom of the image view on the bottom edge of the fab to the bottom edge of the image view and then it would center it uh, to the, well, to the constraint it's doing so. And what I want to show here with the image view, um, it has a <coughs> height of um, zero dips. some issues, don't care about them. Let me remove that one. Oh wait, while I look at it, that's a good way for you to get accustomed to the XML of that. So um, all those XML things uh, for the constraint layout start with this app prefix and um, you can really read that. And in this case it says that the bottom of this view uh, is constrained to the top of a guideline. And um, you always have to use the IDs for uh, those constraints so that Android Studio or Android knows to what something is constrained. It's the same for left to left, right to right. 
Uh, generally, uh, that's a problem with uh, constraint layout or with a, a layout editor actually, um, is that it's using left and right mostly and not start and end. Um, this, uh, at some points, they already corrected that, but not everywhere. And um, this is especially awkward um, because sometimes if, so, uh, if they created left and right and you created start and end, something doesn't show up. For example, you made your margins start and end and um, you direct your view into place in the layout editor and it created uh, constraints to the left and to the right. Uh, your margins won't show up in the layout editor, which is, of course, totally annoying um, because normally your margins would show up here and you can change them here. Um, that's something you must be aware of, I think, um, because they, um, I think they changed adding this um, start and end with Android Studio 2.4, the preview. So I guess they are still, this is still work in progress and should hopefully be fixed uh, with 2.4 finally. Um, with 2.3, they didn't use start and end at all. So this mix they are created right now is probably causing those problems. Um, now what you can do as well is use an uh, aspect ratio. So in this case, uh, the default ratio, if you want to use aspect ratio, is uh, one to one. And it creates a square image in this case, obviously. And, uh, but you could say anything else. And then you would have an a, a aspect ratio of 60 to 9. This is uh, very useful depending on what you're really doing. For example, for uh, game screens where you want a board, for example, in the middle of the screen that uh, is uh, one by one, um, then you can use this aspect ratio constraint. To use that, you have to click into this tiny triangle on the top here and enter that in here, and you can see the aspect ratio on here. And this is how the aspect ratio is displayed uh, in the uh, XML. It's constraint dimension ratio. Um, I'm not so happy about this naming. I would have preferred if they uh, use aspect um, because whenever you do something, let's say, um, oh, let's do and what I usually do is I type bottom, bottom start to typing, and then it suggests anything. And when I do uh, aspect ratio in the screen, I start with aspect. And no, it's not aspect. I have to think that it's something with ratio. Okay, in this case, we have it below the, it's not suggested anymore. Um, but since they don't use aspect ratio, you cannot type in aspect, which would be the most natural thing for you to do. At least for me, it's the most natural thing. So always type ratio if you want to use that. So back to the slides. What's that? Been. So that's what is happening here. Uh, I think they are still running. Yes. Okay. There they are. Um, I hope I've mentioned this. So you have rep content as error. You have a fixed size. Uh, you can say 200 dips wide, 200 dips uh, height, or you have this stretched. In XML, this match constraint is zero dip uh, if you want to use it in, in XML. And in the layout editor, it's match constraint. Um, I've already mentioned uh, the visibility. There's one important uh, thing to know here. Um, if, for example, uh, I've shown you the example where the bottom uh, was gone and then the, um, uh, the other things we're directly aligned to the um, left edge of the screen. Now, if this button uh, that you used before had some margin to the screen and you had no margin to this button before, um, anything else after the button was done uh, in, or ma made invisible would be directly at the edge of the screen. But you might not want this. So if you want um, to change a margin um, depending on this, you can say 
I want is to use a special gone margin that is only used if the view I'm constraining to is made view.gone, marked view.gone. Um, you can do this only in the XML or in the properties editor. Let me just show you the properties editor again. Sorry. So here. Um, So here, this is the normal properties editor, but you can get, um, no, not more options, it's that one. You can get more uh, properties, everything available uh, for a view if you click on that, and let's make it a bit larger. <laughs> and there are those layout gone margins are as well. Everything else con concerning constraints is within here. And you see, you can define quite a lot. So back to the slides. I think I've mentioned everything uh, that's important about the slides. Um, for the aspect ratio, um, <coughs> there's, uh, there are some things to take into consideration. For the aspect ratio to be able to use at all, at least one of those um, uh, sizes or, or the width or the height must be of zero dips or match constraint. And this uh, then is used to uh, adapt the view <coughs> to fit the aspect ratio you selected. And um, if you use, for example, uh, in, in the center of the screen or somewhere leftish, wherever, um, an aspect ratio board for your board game with 1.1, and um, you turn around, this works uh, nicely because it takes into consideration um, the remaining space. So if both views are zero dips or margin constraint, um, no, match constraint, match constraint, then um, uh, then it's using the available space and uses this for aspect ratio. So on uh, <coughs> a portrait screen, portrait screen, it's uh, taking the width into consideration and limiting the height. And on a uh, landscape screen, it's limiting the uh, is it limiting the width there? So uh, I think I've everything, uh, said everything about the uh, um, chains, just so that you can see this. Uh, those slides are published later on uh, on the DirectCon site, I guess. Um, you can have a view in here to uh, understand them again. So there's uh, packed at the bottom, the normal spread, and the spread inside at the bottom. And there's a variation for packed. You can, of course, use a bias to uh, move the pack around. And there's a variation for um, spread. If you make at least one of those views uh, match, uh, not match, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, match constraint, sorry. Uh, then um, it's expanding. So if only one view were uh, match constraint and those others were rep content, this one view would stretch. Uh, that's the sample that I used for the um, list view item. Um, but you could also use, uh, say, um, weights. Oh, sorry, weights for all three items within a, or all items within a, a chain, and then it would work like uh, with linear layout. So the weights are added up and divided uh, equally. So. So that's what I used here at the bottom screen. I've mentioned that the view can be part of multiple chains and that you have to take care uh, actually which uh, view has to be part of multiple chains. Uh, one thing I didn't mention yet is uh, rep content. What if you want to make your uh, constraint layout match uh, rep content? That's actually uh, something that, if you think about it, doesn't work actually. Uh, because um, if, for example, you align something to the bottom of the screen, where is the bottom of the screen if you say rep content? So to work around this, uh, you could use min width and min height that determine uh, then the size of the screen. Of course, you could set the size of the screen uh, of this layout directly as well. So I don't know what the difference between those is. But rep content actually doesn't make really that much sense for a constraint layout. For the constraint layout itself. So, 
Of course, you all can also use the constraint layout programmatically. Uh, what you can use is uh, work with the layout currents as per usual. All those attributes you, that you have seen in this constraint uh, uh, tab on the properties view um, are available as layout parents. What you have to take care of, of course, is that uh, certain elements uh, only work together with other elements. So you can, for example, um, constraint an AND to a start of another element. You cannot constrain an AND to the left edge of another element, obviously. That's a mix of uh, systems. Um, but what you, uh, or what I suggest to use instead is this uh, constraint that set. That's something that Google introduced to uh, make it easier to work with the constraint layout programmatically. And uh, how it works is you create a constraint set, then clone um, the layout. You will see the code directly. And then you're manipulating a certain constraints within the layout. So this is the code. Uh, at the top, I'm just saying, OK, I want this to appear animated. And I'm uh, moving a button from the end of the screen to the start of the screen. So I'm telling here in the set.clear um, that I'm removing this one constraint on the button move. And then I'm using a new constraint instead. So and, uh, what this does for the button move, I constrain the start of this button move to the parent, or actually to the start of the parent using this margin. Then again, I say set apply to layout, and whoosh, your button moves to the other side. Uh, this clear method is uh, overloaded. <clears throat> you could just clear everything on the button move, so all the constraint on this button move. But I really recommend not to do that, because <clears throat> in this case, you have to do everything again on your own. Um, so you have cleared it. Now you have suddenly to uh, define the height and the width of the item again. And you have, to, you have this connection for a, uh, the horizontal appearance, but you have also created a co uh, connection for the vertical position of the view. So in most cases, you're much better off using the, to clear just a specific constraint of your view. So let me sh uh, uh, shortly go into this auto layout. <clears throat> I'm sometimes doing iOS as well, not as much, so uh, I'm not as worse in auto layout, and if you're worse in auto layout, you might, your view might differ, but I personally don't like auto layout, to put it mildly. Um, and this is, uh, um, well, the component tree, let's put it like that, in uh, Xcode, and you see the uh, constraints are scattered uh, all over. Uh, the width and the height is directly on the image, but where this image is constrained to others is uh, within here, and then the stack view is again constrained down here. So uh, you have to look around, and you can create conflicting uh, constraints in auto layout, which you cannot do in Android. So uh, this is um, also very annoying with auto layout. This is just another um, view that's the detail of one uh, constraint, you have an auto layout, and you can see that you have the priority because for those conflicting constraints, you might use priority and say, normally I want this one with a high priority, but when this cannot be fulfilled, I want to use this other constraint with a lower priority. Very awkward, in my opinion. <clears throat> and not only do you have priorities, you also have content hugging priority, how uh, uh, close together, uh, things are, uh, don't ask me the details. Um, so you see there are two more priorities to take into consideration. But you can achieve beautiful things like this in constraint layout. So there is uh, an image view next to a text and um, it moves along with the length of the text until it reaches the end of the screen and then it stays at the end of the screen and the text is ellipsized. You cannot do that with constraint layout. If you want to achieve that with constraint layout, you're back to a custom view group, uh, or you know, custom view, whatever. Um, but in, 
actually. That was a question on Stack Overflow, and even Nicolas Rarard said this is not possible with constraint layout right now. Um, but in my opinion, you won't, don't want to do that. <laughs> on the other hand, what you cannot do it in, uh, in auto layout is this. You can easily achieve this with uh, pack chains. I've uh, already to shown you uh, how to do that. You cannot do this in auto layout directly. You would have to wrap those uh, two text uh, views within a, uh, what is it? Uh, okay. Well, yes, I have to look up what is it into a stack view, yeah, sorry. So, to summarize constraint layout versus auto layout, um, constraint layout is much simpler to handle. You don't have conflicts, which is very nice, but it's also less powerful. You have seen this one example where something was possible on auto layout, but isn't possible on constraint layout. There are probably many more that I'm not aware of. Um, <clears throat> but I think um, I prefer it this way. Let's keep the constraint layout as simple as it is. Maybe some more additions, but generally. And um, if we really need to do something else, um, we have always the possibility to do something with a custom view or custom view group. You don't have uh, guidelines in auto layout. And this view.gon equivalent, which is working so nicely in constraint layout, isn't working at all in auto layout. You really have to do awkward stuff to get this uh, to work then. Now back to the constraint layout solely. There are some bugs. Um, mostly those uh, bugs are in the layout editor. Uh, for example, if you um, start um, uh, moving your view around and you have set up everything properly, there are sometimes still those absolute x and absolute I, uh, y attributes within your um, XML file, and those determine where it appears on the screen. And um, so if you uh, then pack something in the chain, for example, it might not be visible anymore because it's in, a, in an absolute position of the screen, which is not so nice. I've mentioned that the preview is wrong for unconstrained views. Google did this on purpose. I personally still consider this a bug, but Google doesn't. Um, because the preview really should be a preview, and if you want to design something, you should use the blueprint view, in my opinion. Um, ah, here there's a bug for pack chains. If you have a match constraint view in your pack chain, it disappears. Uh, this zero dip width is really a zero dip. The uh, view disappears completely, in my opinion, as in other cases, uh, if there is, um, uh, if you have match constraint, but haven't constrained it to both sides, it's, uh, it's treated as wrap content, and in pack change, it should be treated as wrap content as well. Oh, there are some more bugs, but given the time, let's skip them. I've already uh, mentioned the uh, yellow and red indicator. I'm not happy about this. Mm, I don't know this, let's come back here. So we have this constraint set. We have first to create a constraint set with a constructor and then use this clone method. I would prefer if it were a factory method right away. So uh, we could create a constraint layout with this. So future work. Um, last year it was introduced at I.O. So uh, this year no talk about layouts uh, is scheduled yet. But I think um, it was scheduled last year only during the keynote when it was uh, mentioned for the first time. It wasn't available in the schedule before. So maybe there's something about the layout. Um, but what we have, at least, is that there's a talk about uh, what they're doing with the layout editor, so we can expect more improvements there. And this is still in the docs for the constraint layout. They are making it a separate library, especially since they are planning to enrich its API and its capabilities over time. So I expect it uh, that they are adding more features, hopefully by keeping the simplicity of it. And if you want to go into detail with that, there's a good Google training, there's this layout editor user guide, and the API reference uh, is actually very good, and uh, I can highly recommend it to read it. So. Uh, that's this. 